interesting story for you now. Uh, in the studio with me is uh, Lieutenant Mike Scotty, former lieutenant, former soldier. He's now in Civvy Street, but the war doesn't leave you, Mike. I mean, you, Mike went into war and he brought a video camera um, with him. And ostensibly, you brought this video camera to do what? The video camera was really to just document uh, what we kind of went through from a personal standpoint uh, for personal viewing for friends and family. Uh, but it ended up becoming much more. Uh, I decided to write a book about my experiences over in the war, and that was more like a video diary. It was yeah. almost like a journal. But the incredible thing was then a film producer gets hold of his footage, and they turn this into a film called This Is War. So the year that we're going to look at here is... 2003. 2003. Okay, let's have a look. This is Mike's film, This Is War. News. It's more like PR. Instead of another fluff piece about America's military might, wouldn't it be nice if they reported something relevant, like why we're being sent into combat without enough protective armor, or how all our cheap-ass equipment keeps crapping out on us? I bet there weren't a lot of stories written about how locals were contracted to service our chow. I hate to sound paranoid, but a motivated enemy could easily poison our food and knock us out before we invade. Out here, it's the little things that become next to impossible and I'm not sure if the people back home get that. Forget about taking Saddam out. Just going to the bathroom these days is a major operation. With the winds blowing, we have to line up and hold each other like a bunch of schoolgirls so nobody gets lost while taking a piss. I guess that would be hard to condense. The American what's, what's it like looking back at all that, Mike? It seems surreal. It seems yeah. almost like a different life. You see, the way it's shot, and, and at times how badly it's shot, because you're not a professional cameraman, right. reminds us all of our own sort of home movies that, that we would shoot and we would never revisit and never look at again. But here you've got an actual recording of, of history going on there. You know, and I think it's, um, it is historical because it's a first-person narrative. It's being down in the trenches, you know, in the weeds, um, where my story is, is not really that unique. It's more of every man's story. Uh, and it's, you know, I think it's something to, to capture that because it's not the political aspect that we hadn't, you know. No, we've even seen the, the, the sand blowing about inside the tent. Yeah. I mean, we, we sort of think, well, you go inside the tent and you're secured from everything. But your, 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 your officers who, who are over you, you were a lieutenant, but um, you were there to do a job. You're a Marine um, and you've got this camera in your hand. Did, did you not get told off or have, did you take your eye off the job at any time? That's a great question. And I was um, pro pro uh, professional enough to, to not let that become an issue. Uh, I was a forward observer, so I would be calling in artillery and mortars and airstrikes yeah. when we would be in contact. And what I basically did was I swapped um, a set of binoculars for the video camera. So I would have had a, you know, a set of binoculars that were around my neck that I was using to, to spot the rounds, and I just mm -hmm. used a video camera instead. And as long as I stayed focused outward on the enemy and not kind of fumbling around and, and you know, working with the camera, um, you know, I was able to do my job. And there's actually scenes in the film with the battalion commander in them talking to the camera. So, what, what sort of film is this? What way will this make us feel at the end of all this? People are saying this is the real life hurt locker. You will feel like you've been through combat. That's, that's the goal of the film. Well, I reckon that's not good. I mean, it might help us understand, but when you look at it, you'll, you'll say the deaths, the injuries, the upheaval. Mm -hmm. Will we have an opinion? Do you have an opinion? Was it worth it? The opinion for, uh, you know, for part of the war, I think, was worth it. You know, wars in Afghanistan, um, there's a big sentiment back home. Um, Iraq, you know, we went in under one, kind of one guise, and that ended up not being the case. For me personally, the, the human cost, I lost some, some good buddies over there. Um, you know, you start questioning that whole thing, and that can drive you crazy, but you try not to think about it. Well, Mike, it's absolutely fascinating. Um, thank goodness you did it. Um, it's, it's an incredible record. It's called This Is War. It's out on DVD now. Mike Scotty, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, look, we're going to take a break there. We're going to be live. Uh, you don't follow golf, do you, Mike, at all, do you? Not as much. There's another war of a different type going on <laughs> in, in Wales between your lot and, and our lot, the Ryder <laughs> Cup. Uh, the, this is the scene from uh, around the, uh, the practice tee areas. Now, that's the lovely Di Stewart. And